With the third pick in the 2018 NBA Draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Luka Doncic from Ljubljana, Slovenia, and Real Madrid. I think that's one of the five worst trades of this century. This is the future of the NBA. He's fascinating to watch. He's not going to wow you with explosion or you know, tomahawk slams. That's not his deal. He excels in all of it. You, you can make a case that there was a time that Dirk was the top five player for a three or four year period. Mm. Do you see that in Dunk? 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 Yep. I, 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 do I, don't, not. I don't either, Skip. I, I do don't not. either. When you're 18 years old and you're the MVP of the second best league in the world, it goes to show you, you understand positionless basketball. Straight by Yonder Ring, Capella switched on to Luca. Luca with the step back three. Oh, yeah! <laughs> a person, especially a young one, endowed with exceptional qualities or abilities. Look, man, there's no doubt Luca fits the definition of a prodigy, no matter how you want to define the term. When you start to seek out the common traits that you would find in different prodigies, you immediately open Pandora's box and enter the debate of nature versus nurture. There's strong opinions on both sides of the argument, but just like anything else that's heavily debated, it's not that black and white. There's an area of gray. In other words, it's both. Most parents of prodigies will lean towards crediting their gene pool. Luca's mom was no different. I think Luca was born with it ever since he started walking. When he was one year old, he was playing with a ball in his hands. He was doing all types of sports. He liked soccer a lot, but was too tall to play. As I said, I think Luca was born to play basketball. Luca was blessed with the genetic makeup. His mother a dancer and model, and his father a pro basketball player in the EuroLeague. So by nature, he was predisposed to being an athlete. But what about nurture? Of course he had a ball in his hand at a very young age. But something that's often overlooked is visual reps. A baby or a small child, what do they get from seeing something done over and over again? Let me use a story I once read as an example. A young father and his brother, every evening after work, would go to the park and get some shots up. The father would bring his son, who was just a few months old, in a stroller and park it right next to the court. This routine went on for months and months. Finally, as soon as his son was walking, he bought him a little baby hoop, set it up in the living room, and placed the small ball in his hands. The boy, without a thought, drew the ball back into his shooting pocket and released it with a straight elbow right into the hoop. Now, I don't even remember where I read that story years and years ago, or if it's even true, but the point stuck with me to this day as a coach, a trainer, and as an athlete, how much we can learn from visually watching things, good and bad. Now, back to Luca. You can easily see he had both nature and nurture working for him. Not just being born with the physical attributes, but playing from a very young age, as well as watching a high level of the game at a young age. Some are of the belief that strict, rigid training at a young age is the only way to develop into a prodigy. Sure, you'll have a head start on the competition as you move towards mastering whatever skill it is that you are working on. But are you special? Are you talented? Or are you just putting in more work? As I dug deeper, I realized that's not the methodology to raising a prodigy at all. The most interesting information that I found was this. Normal kids have around six rules they must follow from their parents. Prodigies, on average, less than one. They were allowed to color outside the lines. With that freedom, it's much easier to discover what you like and where your innate talents may lie. Now, you may say, what about practice and discipline? My answer to that, not all practice is created equal. In fact, I'd even argue that a kid practicing for 10 hours for the love of it is equal to a kid practicing for 20 hours being forced to do so. Luca figured this out early on. Yeah, of course. I always say basketball needs to be fun. You know, you need to enjoy. When you go off the, on the court, you need to enjoy 
every minute of the games, and that's, that's my key. The glow, the it factor, the clutch gene. There are many ways to describe it in a phrase, yet it's hard to actually describe. It's clear, though, only 20 or so games into Luka's career, whatever it is, he's got it. Let's just look at his key, essentially saying you must play with joy every time you step on the court. And to me, I think that's the main ingredient in the it factor sauce. I believe Luka was allowed to color outside the lines early in his playing days. Otherwise, he wouldn't have found this key so early. The second ingredient is the ability to deal with pressure. Embrace it, in fact. If my theory on his upbringing is correct, he associates big moments and challenges with fun because he's doing what he wants to do ultimately. Studying other clutch performers, one ability that they all seem to possess is to remain present. Luca's mom once again recognized this trait in him early on. He's here. He doesn't think about the next game. He's thinking about the game today. Also in his life, he's like this. He's not thinking about what might happen or how it's going to be. I thought this quote explained it very well. When you aren't being present, you become a victim of time. Your mind is pulled into the past or the future or both. So when you look at it that way, when your mind is present to me, it's easy to see that it kind of could work as a pressure valve and it's going to free up precious resources in not only your mind, but your body. It's one thing to realize that you need to do this, and it's another to get the opportunity to practice it. Luca, turning pro at 13, has had many more opportunities in practicing being present in the moment than most players his age. All this talk about prodigies, it would be a disservice to not mention the downside. You can go and find countless child prodigies that eventually burn out for various reasons. Now. I don't think that that's going to be a problem for Mr. Doncic, but I do have to propose the question. How much of a finished product is he? I know he's only 19, but he's no normal 19 year old. I do think he is closer to his ceiling than his fellow draft mates. Then again, how often are ceilings reached? Look, I'm not here to declare Luca a future Hall of Famer just yet. I found myself like so many saying, he's special. Making this video, I wanted to peel back some of the layers to why everyone seems to have the same takeaway when watching him. Yeah, he's got great size, handle, and pace. The step back speaks for itself. We've seen those traits in countless players. I think the real separator for Luka is his mind and love of the game, and that shines through and becomes infectious. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it. <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. Announcing you, you, his presence with authority at the end of the game. Aren't you gotta love the young fella.